Kings were often depicted and chosen by the gods, and these gods are not real gods that created anything in the universe. They are just advanced beings that look like us, that look like people, not green men with antennas, but people, men and women that put their pants on and dresses on just like we do, not the creator of the universe. We're talking about an advanced race that engaged us on this planet that masqueraded as gods because of their advanced knowledge and their technology. When they ran into less advanced uh, indigenous cultures, we deified them and said, oh, they must be gods. Look, at the, look what they got. They have magic, just like we do today. Many people today would bow down in a heartbeat if they saw a man flying down from the sky. Jesus has returned. It's the second coming. They bow down and start sobbing instantly. Today, in the 21st century, they'll do that today. It happened back then as well. Nothing's new. Nothing's new under the sun. Ecclesiastes. See, I can quote the Bible too. We're talking about a very sophisticated race of people. We're not talking about a bunch of dummies. We're not talking about a bunch of dummies that just hop on YouTube and start spewing stuff out of their mouth and attacking people. We're talking about intelligent people. We're talking about wise people. We're talking about sages, wisdom keepers. And we're talking about advanced beings. Many of us can learn from this level of knowledge that they've left behind for us. But instead, a lot of people decide to utilize this information to twist it around so they can still put their boot on other people's necks and dominate them so they can be worshipped in the 21st century. They want to be worshipped today. The term Shar serves as a window into complex societies that existed in ancient Sumer. It reveals an intricate connection between rulership, divinity, cosmology, and is defined in this early civilization. The city between two rivers, the Tigris and the Euphrates. Through the pre preservation of these cuneiform tablets, the ongoing efforts of scholars to decipher and interpret them and the legacy of the Sumerians and their profound contributions to human civilization continue to be appreciated and understood. See, I appreciate this knowledge. I appreciate what was left behind by our ancestors for us to figure out, for us to get a, to gleam an insight into their reality and their lifestyle and the way that they lived. Some people, they don't appreciate it. They just want to abuse it. They want to abuse it so they can twist people to worship them. You see, that's what they want to do. But see, I appreciate the ancient knowledge because the ancient knowledge is giving us an insight into what's happening in the future and what's happening now. Jerusalem tonight. So when you look into these texts and you start to see the conflict and you start to see the hate and you start to see the love and you start to see the enlightenment and all these different aspects and natures of humanity within these ancient texts, you begin to realize they weren't too far off from who we are right now today. There's only one source that exists. And I mean the source of energy, the divine spark that empowers this entire universe. But don't let that word divine fool you. <laughs> Just because I use the word divine doesn't mean that someone else that can tap into that source or that knowledge doesn't twist it around and use it for darkness. The origins of the Egyptian mysteries come from the teachings of Thoth, the Atlantean priest king. And in the original Egyptian mystery schools, or the really the Kemetic mystery schools, people were only hand-selected as adept initiates into the mysteries. Hand-selected only. You couldn't walk up and say, hey, I'm coming in to get this knowledge. The teachings were to empower a person to learn how to go deep within inside themselves and tap into the cosmos from within going to inner space and then to expand that from within to the outer space, inner world, outer world, and then begin to affect change on the outer world through knowledge and wisdom and understanding. Over time, as these quote unquote gods with a lowercase g began to vanish and disappear due to war, people began to realize that we can continue these teachings. And over time, the dark brothers crept in. This knowledge can be used to not only uplift and enlighten, it can be used to destroy it can be used to dominate and control. And so then all of a sudden, what started out as positivity and enlightenment turns into Skull and Crossbones, Secret Society, the Bilderberg Group, Secret Society, the Trilateral Commission, the Illuminati, and all these other, there's over two, 300 of them, Secret Societies. They all have one bottleneck back to the comedic mysteries, but they had learned there's power in understanding how to take truths and manipulate people with it by remixing it. And that's what happened to the human race. This is why we need to understand this stuff at the deepest of deepest levels. 